If it was up to me, I, I would make documentaries for the rest of my working career. I could also be totally unemployed next year and be trying to <laughs> shift shit on QVC. <laughs> you just never know. I'm able to do the current affairs and the documentaries, but then I can do stuff like, you know, Strictly and Glow Up. My heart is with the docs. You find yourselves in the most surreal places. Look how we're behaving. Our security advisor is saying that we have to go. You think, God, this is such a privilege, a huge responsibility, and be able to do this for a living. You're shaped, aren't you? by the people that you meet and the places that you visit. You know, I'm far from, from perfect and I've made so many mistakes. And you know, that's, you know, that's life, isn't it? Who, who hasn't? Um, some of the earlier stuff I sort of watch back and I can't bear it. I'm sort of watching through my, my hands. 30p a week to work 14 hours a day in these conditions. I started this when I was 19, 20, so I was a baby and wasn't familiar with kind of this world at all. This world I'm sort of referring to like media and particularly current affairs and news and documentaries. It can feel sort of very highbrow and very middle class and very beige chino sort of scene. Some people are, oh, shot a breath of fresh air, you know, very accessible. And other people were thinking, she is so undeserving of this. And there are so many people that have studied journalism and I've grown and I'm sort of working it out and I understand how it all works. There was this one occasion where they'd invited me on the radio and said, oh, you know, will you talk us through your experiences? And the producer, I sort of put the cans on because I was doing it wild. And she said, oh, you know, um, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. La, 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 yeah, understood. And then she said, oh, and as much as you can bear it, we're not pandering to prejudices, but could you just make sure like, you pronounce all your T's? And essentially, she's sort of saying, can you speak as posh as you can bear? <laughs> and that gets a bit kind of tiresome and you feel a bit deflated, but you either moan about that and don't engage, or you have those frank discussions and you sort of dig your heels in and make sure that you are still there and you do still have a presence. It's absolutely awful here. You can't catch your breath properly because there's just dust and crap and bits of the ceiling falling down. Stacey Dooley from Newton is a high street fashion fanatic. I love when I was in India, I understood that I was really lucky to be able to be able to sit down and ask people questions about their life and I really enjoyed it and I was working sort of free jobs at the time. I was working at Luton Airport, my pal's shop and the pub and I thought oh, I wonder if they'll ask me to do anything else um, and then I started campaigning and I just started doing bits and bobs off my own back and then the guy who was in charge of the channel called me into his office and said oh um, do you fancy your own gig? And I remember thinking, ah, oh, okay. I had no idea what I was saying yes to, really. People always ask me, right, how, how did you get into this? Like, have you got any advice? I feel like I can't really <laughs> give any great advice because my route was so unorthodox and so kind of unusual. Um, what I will say is don't feel the temptation to conform. I remember when I was first commissioned, the bosses said to me, you know, we've asked you to do this because we like your tone and, and your approach. Don't feel like you've got to kind of mimic traditional kind of middle class journos. As cheesy and as cringeworthy as it sounds, just um, do you.